ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living 60-card pile boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher. The 1400 ladder, we're getting closer and closer to 1500. I think I'm going to suplex, I don't know, the Ultra Ball through a garden hose if we hit 1500 subscribers. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to figure that out once we cross that bridge. But ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to show off um, what I would play if I was going to the NAWCQ. Honestly, I'm not going just because of the fact that it's all the way in Texas. It's going to take a few hours of a flight from Florida to there. It's in a different time zone by an hour, so you're dealing with jet lag. Plus, it's a new course set that you're not going to have time to really play test because it comes out the same weekend as the NAWCQ. And more than anything, I'm just tired of the Snake Eyes, Dia Bell Star shenanigans format that we're in. I really just want a new balance, hopefully a lot better than the OCG one. Um, but I at least wanted to show off what I would have played going into this event, what I've tested around with. Um, and a lot of this is theory, you know, like I'm not going to locals every week and like proxying up cards and like just playing on the side and not even playing in the tournament. So, um... A lot of this, uh, I think, could be argued, could use work, um, like the extra deck. I would love to have Underworld Goddess in here. Um, you know, maybe uh, the High Wave King Caesar because we're playing the Fiendsmith cards, but yet you can easily get to an Apo by summon number five or six. Um, would love to play Underworld Goddess, assuming that we get Moon of the Closed Sky in Infinite Forbidden, which I, I'm 99% certain that we will. If we don't, then it will definitely be in the tens. I don't see why they would wait. Um... But assuming that we get Moon in the Closed Sky and Info, um, then Underworld Goddess just becomes that much better. That's also why it's so hard to test for Nats, because we don't even know everything that's in Infinite Forbidden. So, like, you have to test assuming, like, worst case scenario that you don't have Closed Sky, but then you also need to have a plan if Closed Sky is in the set. It's just too much stress. I don't want to be dealing with all that. I've got enough crap going on right now. So, let's go ahead and dive on into this deck. Um, yes, obviously it's a Snake Eyes deck. Snake Eyes is the best deck, but it's also like a pile of good stuff where, you know, there are so many good just generic engines in the game that you can kind of mix and match with what you want to do. So this is what I've sort of theory crafted together. Feel free to take this build to Nationals and, you know, hopefully see success with it or, you know, make it even better. And depending on what our ban list is, assuming that we get one after Nationals, this deck may still be viable after we get a ban list, whether we get it before Nats or after Nats, whatever the case may be. Um, even post-Infinite Forbidden, if Snake Eyes doesn't get hit that hard, I'm definitely going to play something like this going into the new regional season. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive on into it here. Uh, we're just going to go straight across, even though it's not really organized all that well. Uh, we're playing one Nib, uh, two Flam Burge, one Snake Eyes Dio Bell Star, um, with the three Millennium Caveman. So this is really cool because we're maxing out on Caveman with the one Golem and the one Shield because Caveman guarantees you a second body because after you use its effect to summon it on resolution, it gets you to the Golem or to the Shield. So just this one card guarantees you Moon of the Closed Sky, which then guarantees you into the Requiem to get you into your whole Fiendsmith engine. So it's really good. So we're playing three of those. Three Black Witch, uh, three Fenrir. These are kind of flex spots. These could really be anything, but I think Fenrir is just a good card. Uh, one Golem. Even just opening up Shield or Golem is not bad because it's just a free body that you're paying 2000 for. Um, three Fiendsmith Engraver. It says the Fiendsmith, but we got that TCG name. It's called Fiendsmith Engraver. Uh, one Shield, three Ash, three Moonlit Shell, three Ogre, one Bell. We're playing one Oak with three Ash, three Poplar, one Lurie for the Fiendsmith engine, one Droll with three Valor. We're also playing one One for One, three Talents because it's a God card, three Bonfire because it's a god card, one OSS because it needs to be banned, uh, two Tractus, three Cross Out, three Wanted, one Divine Temple, and then of course the three Imperm. Um, really not much to explain in this deck, right? You're playing a 60 card pile, so you want to play 18 to 20 hand traps. You want to max out most likely on like three talents and three cross out because you want to see a decent amount of the time some way to interact with the opponent if they try to hand trap you or if they do hand trap you in the case of talents. Um, I kind of want to play call by, but I feel like that's almost trying a little bit too hard to stop a hand trap when you're playing so many good generic engines in the deck that you can play through, I would say, like two to three hand traps, depending on how you open. Um, moving on into the extra deck, we're playing one uh, Fiendsmith Die High Ray, one Lacrimosa, one Harbinger, and then just the typical Snake Eyes stuff. This really doesn't need any explanation. One Raging Phoenix, one Zelantis, one Apo, one Promethean, a Dark and Fire Charmer, um, Little Knight, uh, the Sequentia, Moon of the Closed Sky, again, assuming we get this in info, uh, one Mascarena, one Requiem, 
one anima. And then the side deck here is just Unworld Goddess and Callback because these are just things that I'm messing with. The side deck can really be whatever it is that the meta calls for. It's going to be really hard to make a side deck for the NAWCQ, which I feel bad for anyone that's going to try and figure that out. Because you pretty much have to go off of what the OCG is doing. Um, and even then, they're in a totally different format because they have Max C. Uh, you could easily side deck, like, say, three copies of the Mold Chummy thing, which is like a Max C retrain, um, because it just, it absolutely dominates Flunder. Um, and I, I guess, I guess you could say it dominates a couple other matchups. I mean, not a lot of decks special summon from the hand. I mean, maybe Cash Tira, but I don't know. I feel like you've got better options at that point. But this deck is super fun. Like, you have so much gas. Like, look at this. Three, four, five. You're sitting pretty. You can go Fenrir into another Fenrir so that you have discard fodder. You have talents if they hand trap you. You've got bonfire just to get you full combo. Like, it's super fun. Three, four, five. Even just opening up Poplar is not terrible. You're sitting on four hand traps. This can at least get you to OSS. And, like, you, you've got full combo again. Three, four, five. You've got Fenrir, Poplar. You're sitting on two hand traps and a Flambridge. You're sitting pretty. Uh, three, four, five. You've got Fiendsmith. So just opening up this guarantees you multiple bodies on the board to where like you can get Lacrimosa. You can go into Apollosa. You could play Beatrice to dump Snake Eye Ash. You know, that's where like a lot of this stuff is in theory. The issue with this particular build, honestly, is just the extra deck because there are so many cards you kind of have to play that you don't have a lot of room um, to take stuff out and move stuff around. Like I would love to play Wave High King Suzer. I just don't feel like I have the space for it. Like I don't think I'm going to take out Hope Harbinger for Wave High King Caesar because you always want to have access to Hope Harbinger for your end board along with Apollosa. And so in my testing, I noticed it was easy to get four bodies on the board by summon number four or five. Um, and if the opponent wants to nib you because you're threatening, you know, a three or four negate Apo, they're going to have to nib you and then you still have four other cards to play with. Like, there was a combo I tested out where I had up uh, Sequentia with two other bodies. I think it was like Fiendsmith tracked, uh, Fiendsmith Engraver and something else. Um, and then with the Sequentia, you know, you could just slam them all together in Apollosa. So, you know, at that point you have a three negate Apo, you're playing with four other cards in your hand at that point, in that particular combo at least, and you're sitting pretty. So, uh, this, this deck is super consistent, you have a lot of good starters in this deck. Obviously you don't want to open up the Fable Lurry. Uh, one for one doesn't trigger the lorry because it says send, not discard. Um, you could also play things like Where Arf Thou because you <laughs> you could wear Arf Thou Fable Lurry um, since it is level one, and if you control a level one, then obviously that's how you play Where Arf Thou. It doesn't negate the effects of the lorry, so like you can add it to hand and then I don't know discard it off of Tractus because like maybe you search Fiendsmith Engraver, you can pitch the lorry, lorry summon itself. Now you don't take two thousand damage. That's something to keep in mind. You could also maybe play Shrine of Wedju since you are playing the Millennium Monsters. I feel that Wedju is a little bit just inconsistent because you have to place a monster from your hand into the back row as a continuous spell. And the only card I can really think you're going to want to do that with is like I, either Snake Eyes, Diabell Star, or maybe the Flamberge, depending on your board state at that point. And then just to place a Caveman, uh, the Shield or the Dynasty, or the uh, the Shield or the, the Golem doesn't seem all that great. Um, so there are some things that I think could be better with this deck with more testing and more theory crafting and stuff. But even just as a rough draft for what I would want to play at the NAWCQ, this deck is super fun. I love playing these 60-card piles. If you remember, we played a, what was it, 52-card pile deck of Tempai, uh, Kash Tira at uh, the YCS. It had a fantastic Snake Eyes matchup, but when you play against terrible rogue players all day, playing garbage like, you know, Vanquish Soul and uh, what was it, Dinomorphia in round one, like Dinomorphia is a terrible matchup for Tempai, but when you hit the one dude out of, you know, however many player was, over a thousand, and it's the one bad player in the room that's scrubbing out with Dinomorphia, like what, what can you really do? Um, but this is what I would have played for the NAWCQ, something to this effect. I think that this deck is really good. The Finsmith cards are insane. I think the Millennium cards have a lot of untapped potential, especially like in Sprite, because you know you can just make Puzzle Mino and then change this to like a level two, and then you're just making a gigantic. Like it's it's fun times, fun times. But guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm just chilling out, so we're waiting for a ban list. I'm sorry, I'm not uploading every day like I normally do, but. I mean, the game is boring AF right now, so uh, I'd rather do something else with my time. I'd rather go touch grass. That, that's what I would rather do. I'd rather go mow the grass. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.